I've already recorded this video once, but I forgot to record sound. How many times have you heard me say that? Will I ever learn? Probably not. Let's talk about the Chimera Ant Arc. Uh, this video I'm talking about the, the first third of the arc. I've hoped to be able to split this into two videos, not drag it out too long, but I just, you can't. This video, I have too much to talk about and I'm only a third of the way through. So for context, at the point where we, we're, we're reintroduced with Kite is where I am. So there is so much that happened in, in the first third of this arc so much to discuss. I want to start by talking about the Chimera Ants because when I first was introduced to them, my immediate reaction was, no, I mean, it's too weird. Giant ants that want to take over the world? Nah, I read One Piece, but no. It took very, very, very little time for me to be completely and totally invested in these antagonists. Uh, okay, so we have our queen ant whose life's mission is to produce a king, someone who is powerful enough, great enough, I don't know all the context around it, something enough to be able to take over the world. World domination. So the way they reproduce is by feasting on something and then the genetic code from that something is what creates the, the chimera ant. So for instance, they feast on a human and then the genetic code from that human is mixed with the gen genetic code of the chimera ants and they live. So they take on a piece of the personality of what they once were. They retain a little bit of the memories as well. It says in the text that chimera ants, the just, just them, just the ant part of their DNA is violent by nature. But then you couple that with humans and they create this hybrid of devastating foe. And it's so, 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 so you have, people like Colt. So Colt is a character that I'm very, very invested in because we saw these two children uh, and they they met an, a chimera ant and, and the child, the boy, was telling his sister, go run. He wanted to protect her. He was very loyal to her. He loved her. And then both he and she were turned into chimera ants and he became cult and he retained his sense of loyalty. That loyalty was just transferred onto the queen. And so he is extremely loyal to her. And he also has these kind of semi flashbacks where he is thinking, I couldn't protect her. I can't protect anyone. This happens to me every time. And he's obviously remembering his sister or at one point where he actually name drops his sister. He says something about Rima and then the person he was talking to questioned him and he's like, what are you talking about? Who's Rayma? Like he recalls her in his subconscious, but it's not at the forefront to the point that he even really knows what he's talking about. And that sort of subliminal, um, unconscious retention of who they once were is so fascinating to me. Couple that with their absolute ruthlessness. Um, they, you know, they love killing, they, they relish murder. And once they get a hold of guns, they love to shoot. They think it's super, super fun to kill people this way. Um, they, some of them, so their goal is to capture humans and bring them back to the queen for her to eat. And so that she can have her hunger satiated so that she can build her army so that she can create the king. And they do that, but they do it poorly because their violent nature makes them not fully loyal to the queen where they, yes, they want to serve her. Yes, they want to do what they're supposed to do, but also, Killing humans is fun. Eating their brains is tasty. So yes, I should bring back these humans to her, but I'm going to eat some of them. Or yes, I should bring these humans back to her, but I'm going to chain some of them like dogs, but treat them in the most inhumane, humiliating, dehumanizing way. And and the the cold, detached way that they do these things is so fascinating. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more in a little bit, but this violent nature and this apathy that they have for humans is, is really interesting. There's a scene later on 
where King says something and, and I'll come back around, we'll talk about this some more. Kite is another character that we get a lot more of. I'm actually really surprised at how much we got of Kite so far in the arc. I fully expected him to just kind of be around, drop some, some information and then leave like he did the first time we met him at the beginning of the series where he uh, is a connection to Gon's dad. He uh, drops some information, drops an object, his dad's uh, a hunter license, and then he's gone. And um, I thought that we were doing this again at the end of the arc where we're dropped with Kite again, but instead he's extremely significant. He truly cares about the boys. He's genuinely, he's happy to see Gon, he's happy to hear his story, he's happy to have them around, but he also realizes who they're up against. He also realizes how extreme of a foe the Chimera Ants are, and he knows that if he lets Gon tag along and he's not strong enough, he's going to die. So he has this sort of tough love where he says stuff like, I can't rescue you in combat. If you can't beat him, go home. You'll just be in the way. Which sounds really harsh, but it's just him being brutally honest with him. It's just him saying, "You, I can't rescue you, you will die. I can't rescue you, so you'll just be in the way if you're not strong enough. He still looks out for them, he still loves them, he just doesn't coddle them. Um, one really notable thing is when they face off against Ramont, Ramont, the bunny one, um, and, and Kite tells him, go ahead, face off against him. If you can't handle this, then you know, you can't handle being here. So they do, and Kite is really impressed with them. He's really impressed with what he sees, with how powerful they are, with how skilled they are. And, and so he, he says, all right, you can stick around for now. But this line, from now on, win or lose, it'll be hell. It's such a great tone setter. It's such a great, I mean, we already have seen who the Chimera Ants are, how brutal they are, how, how um, terrifying they are, but this, is it kind of solidifies it for us, the reader, as well as for, for Gon and Killua of what we're facing off against, no matter what happens, we're not coming back well from this one. Um, Kite tells Gon and Killua not to hesitate to kill and they face off against more Chimera ants. This time they're facing off against separate ones. And uh, Kite says, don't hesitate to kill. So they don't, uh, they both, take down their opponents with zero hesitation. And this is notable to me because to Gon's knowledge, from Gon's perspective, this is his first kill. This isn't Killua's first kill. He was raised as an assassin. He's killed tons of people. Killing is no problem. Part of Killua, a big part of Killua's arc is going from being a, an unfeeling killer to being a more well-rounded person who holds back on those instincts and who accepts uh, love and friendship and camaraderie and who isn't, who doesn't just jump to kill, right? Like that's a big part of his character arc at the moment. And for Gon, who has never really flinched at people being killed around him, he himself has never killed. And typically when a protagonist has their first kill, typically there's some sort of self-reflection that happens. There's something about it, even if it's in self-defense, you know, the, that that affects a person, that does something to a person. And and take Karapika for 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 instance. He brought a shovel, shovel to the fight with the phantom troop that he took down. He knew he was burying a body that day, but he still had a lot of self-reflection about it. He he was fine with the reality that he would be killing, and in fact, he he wanted to do it, but to take another life wasn't something to shrug off. And for Gon, it was such a non-event that you could almost miss it. And I just think that's really notable. And it's true that it wasn't Gon's first kill. It's true that actually Kite killed the Chimera Ant and made note to let us know that the head must be killed, not just the body cut in half, otherwise they live on for another day. But, 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 from Gon's perspective, for at least a couple of minutes, it was his first kill. Nothing, just, just saying. Oh, it's also notable too, I should have mentioned this, in his fight with Ramont, he, Ramont, he was the one that introduced Nen to the Chimera Ants because 
He fought Ramont, but didn't kill him because Ramont got away. And then Ramont was, and so, so they had observed Nen up to this point. They had seen humans using it, but up to this point, this was just some weird thing humans could do, some weird power that they possessed. It was Gon who presented Nen to him. And he went back to the Chimera Ants and showed them, and they pursued this knowledge. And they probably would have gotten it anyway, but they got it this early from that. Um, another thing that I think is notable is as Gon and Killua continue to fight more Chimera Ants and Kite continues to be more and more impressed the more he sees from them, one thing that Gon says is, um, I won't sympathize with guys who diss each other like that. And Kite's response, that's the problem? That's what you take issue with? What happens when we come across Chimera Ants with a strong fellowship? And I don't know what this is foreshadowing. I don't know what this is about. I'm just making note of it because this seems like such a distinct line from Kite. And I wonder if we are going to see some Chimera Ants that have a strong fellowship coming up and if Gon is going to hesitate and that will cause some sort of issue because because that would endear him to them or make him not want to fight them. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what's gonna happen with this. I'm just making note of it. Uh, one thing that this arc does extremely well is creating a sense of dread. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll use, so when, when Pito, when Pito uh, learns about Nen and then hunts, not really hunts down, but finds the hunter from the hunter exam, whose name I've forgotten, but the one that we, you know, befriended at the end of the hunter exam and then he's back here and then he's hiding from the Chimera Ants and Pito finds, it doesn't matter, it's on the screen. When uh, Pito captures him and cuts his skull open and starts poking around in his brain, to get the answers about Nen. And then once Pito gets those answers, just calls for his execution. There were a few scenes in this arc that made me physically nauseous. Like reading it, I'm feeling ill. This was one of them. This scene was not only, I don't know, just Togashi did such a great job of, of, creating these horrors and but but on top of that creating this feeling of dread because when Pito got this information when when Pito actually learned how to use Nen and taught the others and now we go from these superhuman strong ridiculously strong ridiculously brutal and and apathetic creatures but now they're this much stronger it just it, it just filled me with this sense of Oh no. Anyway, back to Kite and Gon and Killua. I really do think that through this time where, where Gon and Killua were facing off against the Chimera Ants, uh, I really do think that Kite, as he was watching them do it, he was, as he was being impressed by them each time, he was accepting them. And, and by the end of this, he, it was kind of this, um, all right, we can fight next to each other, you know? Like, I, I, I feel like he really accepted them as comrades throughout, through this, until Pito showed up. And, and the scene where, where Pito is off in the distance and then just right there. And, and as soon as that happens, Kite immediately turns back to the boys and says, run get out. And all throughout this arc so far, we've seen characters observe other characters' nen and be able to tell from just that observation, I don't have any hope against you. And that's what Kite did here. He saw very quickly, there's no hope here, and, and told the boys to run. Lost his arm, told them to get out. And gone, predictably, digs his heels in and powers up because Gon is such a bulldozer. He is not someone who strategizes and thinks through these things like he should be. He just says, he just bullheadedly puts his horns down and tries to barrel through his opponents, whether they're too strong for him or not. And Killua smartly knocks Gon out, puts him over his shoulder and runs. 
Did you hear me? Did you hear what I just said? Knocks Gon out, puts him on his shoulder, and runs. He didn't run. He didn't leave Gon to die. What did he do? He, he elongated the time that he was in extreme danger. He left himself vulnerable for longer than he needed to so that he could knock Gon out, throw him over his shoulder, and run. Not abandon him. Just throwing that out there, Biscuit. Just, say, just telling you. Just saying, Biscuit. We'll circle around at that. Um, actually, the scene where they're running was really, really haunting. Um, when Killua is in his head and he says, we were complacent, too confident of our own powers. Both of us combined were worth less than a one-armed kite. That was his assessment. That's the reality. If Kite was, him was by himself, this wouldn't have happened. We were fools. Him running away, beating himself up about being overconfident, thinking they could, they could do this, calling himself a fool. It's tough. But I do think he's wrong. Um, I do think that it's not that they're less powerful than a one-armed kite, and that's why Kite told them to get out, because they were just a distraction. I think that what happened was Kite just realized, as soon as he saw Pito, he realized there's no hope here. And so he was saving their lives. And I don't know, you know, all throughout our time with Kite, as he's summoning a weapon and he gets one at random, he's complaining, oh, it's so annoying. Um, and he didn't complain about this one. And I don't know if that's because this is his best weapon and he still wasn't good enough. My headcanon is that the reason he didn't complain is because he knew it didn't matter which one he got. The weapon is pointless. He could tell that there was no hope here and he knew what his fate was. Oh, oh, right. So then after that, oh, gosh, okay. Oh man, oh, it's terrible. So gone after he thanks Killua for saving his life, good on him for being a little bit self-aware. Um, he, he says that Kite's gonna be fine, he's still alive, they just need to get stronger and they need to save him. And I think Killua is well aware that this is very naive and way too hopeful, but he can't put, he can't, he can't deny him that hope. And then we cut to Pito, who is sitting on the ground, stroking the sever, severed head of Kite, thinking, this was so fun. I wish we could do this again. I wish there was a way to play with you again. And that is how Pito's ability is born. And Kite is put back together to be their training dummy, dummy so that they can play again and again and again. I'm telling you, this arc is sickening. Anyway, so uh, our, our characters meet up with, what are their names? I don't know. Um, Get Getro, Morel, and the third guy. And they say, we're gonna go save Kite, we're gonna go fight the Chimera Ants, um, and we have two assassins waiting that also wanna join us. They have two halves of these things. Here's two halves. It, the point is, Gon and Killua have to go face off against Knuckle and shoot. And that's when we get to meet Knuckle. And I love him. He is my passionate boy. He, we meet him when he is, uh, passionately exclaiming about someone not cleaning up after their dog's poop. And he's so emotional and he's so sensitive and he's so thoughtful and he's just loud about it all. And I just love it. I love that every time we see him, he just has adopted more dogs. There are just more stray dogs that are now a part of his family. I love that he has this 
Uh, the reason he wants to join the team of people that are trying to take down the Chimera Ants isn't because he also wants to exterminate them, even though he's totally okay with exterminating them, but it's because he doesn't want to just mindlessly kill them. He wants to get close enough to get to know them and to understand them before he decides what their fate should be. This is a very mature way of looking at things, but also Killua hears him say that and says, that'll get you killed. And I mean, he's probably right. The chimera ants are ruthless. And if you hesitate, yeah, it might get you killed. I'm really curious to see what is gonna happen to him. I also think it's interesting the team up that happened because Knuckle is um, very, brash, which Gon isn't, but he's very bullheaded, he's very strong, he 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 rushes into any fight, um, but, and so is Gon. And then you have Shoot, who I really don't know very well, his ability is very cool, but I don't really know him very well, but he's very timid, he's slow to enter fights, um, and, you know, Killua's weakness is that he runs from fights. So it's just, it's an interesting pair up, I, I kind of like that. Oh, um, Palm also calls on Biscuit to come help the boys. Palm is a character that I liked so much on Introduction. I love her character design. I love her evil ruthlessness. I must get to NGL and it, if you don't get me there, I'm gonna be so furious, I'll just kill you all. And she's just like dangling knives in front of them, reminding them of the promise that they made and reminding them. Uh, at one point Biscuit asks, is that a threat? And she's like, no, I'm just warning you this is what's going to happen. Uh, I, I loved her at first. She's the perfect kind of character for me to read. But then we did that whole romance thing with Gon and I just, oh, I just ruined it. Oh, we also got a flashback with Gyro, which I'm kind of just gonna skip over. I know that he was the previous leader of the NGL and now he's been turned into a chimera ant. We got a flashback of his very tragic backstory, but I don't really know what his relevance is in the story, so I'm acknowledging it and I'm just moving on. The fight between Gon and uh, Knuckle I really enjoyed because Knuckle, the good boy, the whole time is trying to tell him what his weaknesses are and, and trying to coach him and encourage him. He's being nice to him. He's trying to teach him to be a better fighter. Knuckle is absolutely positive. There's no way Gon is going to win this fight. There's absolutely no way that he can overpower Knuckle. And so he tells him, fight me as many times as you want and I'm gonna coach you through it and maybe help you get a little bit better along the way. And that's just so sweet. Also, Knuckles' ability is w so weird and awesome and cool. Um, bankruptcy? Really? <laughs> His ability is being a banker. Actually, it's very complicated. I'm not gonna spend all this time trying to break it down. But the point is, I really enjoyed their conf their fight. The first one before he brings his ability out when he is telling Gon about his weaknesses, but then he says your biggest weakness is your lack of experience. And then the fight concludes with Gon using uh, his paper ability, Nen ability to shoot out a string of Nen or a ball of Nen. It's moving too slow. Everybody's like, why are you doing this? Turns out it's a distraction and Gon is going around to use rock, his, his powerful, punch, but he expended all of his energy before he got around to that part and ended up passing out and losing the fight. And Knuckles' observation of, if you hadn't done that, then you would have won this fight. And it's such a great display of Gon's weakness, his inexperience. He, he bulldozes through things. He, he will not think through stuff enough and, and instead he just tries to brute strength it and he just tries to push himself beyond how far he realistically can go. And up to this point, that's worked out really well for him. Up to this point, him pushing himself to the point of, you might die from this man or you will pass out from this has ended up working out okay, but not this time. No, now his inexperience and his brute force kind of fighting style is what's making him miss out on the opportunity to go try to find Kite. Also, Biscuit challenges, I mean, like, obviously the ability is what makes him ultimately lose, but you know, it's what, it's what made him lose this fight. 
Then Biscuit challenges Killua, they fight, and she points out his weaknesses. His weaknesses, in her, from her perspective, is his flight instinct. Whenever he sees someone that he assesses to be stronger than him, he bolts. And this is fair. This has happened all throughout the series. She's right. But from this assessment, she then deducts that that means that one day he's going to leave Gon to die. He's going to flee and leave Gon to die. So <laughs> I have so many feelings. You guys should have seen me. You should have seen me on my Discord after I read that. I was a mess. Actually, I was a mess throughout a lot of this. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think Biscuit was wrong. I think she was so heavily and strongly wrong. And I think that scene with Kite, where Kite actually, when when Killua knocks Gon out and, and hoofs it out of there, and Kite's like, ha, smart kid, because he made the right choice, dadgummit. And that scene displays perfectly the fact that, yes, Killua does run whenever someone is stronger than him. He doesn't do like Gon and, and lower his head and, and try to bulldoze his way through it, try to be bullheaded. <sighs> yes, he does run. But what she miscalculated was that his loyalty to Gon, Gon was, is stronger. She, she observed something true and then her deduction from that was wrong, in my opinion. Now, I think that she's coming from a good place. I think that, I think that what she's doing here is tough love. And, and her calling out his weakness is totally fair. Her saying, listen, your flight instinct is a failing of yours. It is a flaw. It will trip you up. But then taking it so far as to say you'll abandon Gon, I think that's where she was wrong. And it kills me that this, this good intention, this good intention, this good intended call out then only made Killua question himself to the point that he decided to leave Gon. <sighs> it hurts me, it hurts me so much. I mean, she even says in that whole thing, she's like, it's not your fault, the people that trained you, the people that raised you, your family, they're the ones that taught you to be this way. And I think they did it out of love. I think they truly love you. Ma'am, have you met them? They torture him, they're abusive, they're gaslighters, they're horrible. I, and so you, you observe something and you made a deduction and it was wrong. And so now here you are with Killua and Gon and you see Killua's deficit and then you make a deduction and you're wrong. I think you're wrong. And it's funny because usually a protagonist does this. Usually a protagonist is more like Gon who just, who just forces his way into being stronger and, in, and, and wills his way into winning battles. But in reality, seeing, hey, this person I'm about to face off against is stronger than me. I'm not gonna fight him. This is a good thing. This is a good quality. That's probably what kept him alive as an assassin, and that's probably what will keep him alive tomorrow for not facing off against Pito, Pito because Gon would have died. <sighs> and he didn't die. Do you know why he didn't die? Because Killua didn't abandon him. He picked him up and he ran away with him. Just. And don't misunderstand my tone, and I understand that it's hard to do that because I'm hysterical. But I'm not saying that Togashi did a bad job here. I'm not saying that he wrote the scene wrong. I actually think what he did was brilliant, assuming that I'm assessing the scene correctly and that Biscuit assessed everything wrongly. I think that that's brilliant because what Togashi is doing, and he's done several times throughout this arc, is taking characters with good intentions and making them wrong sometimes. And conflicts arise because they're imperfect and because they can't know everything. And that's just really good storytelling when, when characters are, have good intentions, but they just miss the mark sometimes. I like it. It's good. It brings me so much anger. <laughs> So Gon and Killua fight Knuckle and shoot. Knuckle's ability is enacted. Gon goes bankrupt. He has 30 days with no Nen. And Killua says, all right, well, I will, I will devote my life to protect you for 30 days. And then I will leave you. 
Oh, you guys, you have no idea. You think I'm hysterical now. You should have seen me then. Cut to queen and king. King's still in the womb. He's still not yet born, but he decides due dates are for chumps and uh, starts, starts being born, I don't know. And the queen says, no, no, it's not your time yet. In the womb, King tells his mother, shut up, and then punches through her womb and killing her in effect, not immediately, but beginning her death by destroying her organs and, and destroying her body and making her terribly vulnerable. So he forces his way out of the womb, immediately says, I don't care about her, don't worry about her, feed me and give me a better place. This room sucks. So King establishes himself from the get-go as just something, just, just a cold-hearted, cruel, selfish being. And then Colt sees his dying queen and he's so loyal and he, he turns to Pito and says, hey, your ability, you healed Kite, heal our queen. And Pito says, nah. I don't need her anymore. I've got him. And they leave her to die. And it this this is also interesting to me the the way the structure falls from here on out. Now that king is born and queen is dying, um the cult turns to the humans with a white flag and says, please, I'll do anything, just save her because his loyalty is his dominant feature. But then you have all the other chimera ants and the entire structure that the queen has built up and it crumbles. It, everybody decides to be their own king. And um, you know, you've got the king of speed and the king of killing and the king of whatever they're good at. They decide I'll be the king of this. And unfortunately, this also means that they're going to go spread their seed. Thanks for that one, Tagashi. Thanks for that verbiage. They're gonna go spread their seed elsewhere and and reproduce and kill every <laughs> everything. So so the structure previous is you have the queen and the soldiers feed the queen and they are not reproducing of their own. She's the only one that's creating more chimera ants, but with her gone, now they can do whatever they want. So they can spread further and wider with, with more anarchy, with more disorder and more chaos, and they can slaughter with no, nothing to hold them back. It creates an even stronger sense of chaos and an even stronger sense of dread because now the whole structure that rules the chimera ants is also crumbling. So it's, you have how powerful and strong and ruthless they are, but then you also have now, we don't even understand them and we don't even have one core person to take down because, because it's anarchy. It, they're, they're all their own agents. Most of them are their own agents now. The Royal Guard are still loyal to King, which by the way, I'm excited to get to know the Royal Guard more. Pito is the only one that I actually really know at this point. The other two I haven't gotten anything from, so I hope I will. But anyway, they're the only ones that are really truly loyal to King at this point, at least as far as I can see. I haven't had a lot of page time with King yet, but that's, that's, what it looks like at this point. We have the scene that I super didn't expect from Gon where after he realizes that he, that Knuckle and Shoot are going to be the ones to go uh, try to hunt down Kite. And I don't know, I just thought that Gon would dig his heels in and, and fight some more, just try to force his way in. Okay, yes, you two won, but I'm tagging along anyway. Or, I mean, I know he doesn't have his Nen abilities, and, but he's always just, bulldozed his way through things and, and he doesn't. He realizes how weak he is and he breaks down and he cries and he asks Knuckle, please find Kite for me. And, and then he breaks down to Killua and says, I'm so weak. I didn't realize how terrible it was to be so weak. And this is where Killua says that he will devote his life to protect Gon. And, and at the end of those 30 days, when he gets his Nen back, he's gonna leave him forever. They do try to operate on the queen. They try to make synthetic organs and um, try to save her life. Colt says, use my organs, use all my blood, kill me to save her. 
but it's not gonna work out. And she actually ends up contacting them and saying, um, <laughs> basically saying, leave me to die. It doesn't matter, I've fulfilled my purpose. We just need to make sure that King fulfills his, which is to take over the world. Then she names him Miriam, I think is how you say it, which means uh, the light that illuminates all. Okay. And Colt finds a tiny baby within her carcass and devotes his life, he transfers his loyalty from the queen onto this baby, devotes his life to protect it. And then surprisingly, Morel devotes his life. He tells Colt, promise me that you will never harm another human and that this baby will never harm a human and I'll devote my life to make sure to protect you too, which I don't know, it's so, it's so, I'm just loving how all the chess pieces are moving, you know? People that I thought would be loyal to the queen are completely leaving her to die and disowning her. People who I thought would be loyal to the king have decided to make kings of themselves. People who I would never have expected to be loyal to each other are pledging their lives to protect one another. There's, it's, everything, every relational situation that I thought would happen something else is happening. And I'm just, I'm on my toes. I'm just, I'm so very on my toes. We get to follow King for a little bit. Again, I haven't spent much time with him, but we do follow him as he says, the food you're giving me isn't good enough. Let me go find some more food. Ew, those humans don't taste good enough. Let me find some rares. Smack you. How dare you try to inform me of something even though I'm literally a newborn. Let me find some rare humans. Finds that King, how dare he call himself a king, a human king, kills him, yummy yummy. And then those women uh, try to beg for their life. And what King says, utilize your punny brain and think hard. Did you ever lend an ear to the cows or the swine that begged for their lives? This is an excellent line. First of all, it shows again his ruthlessness, but also drawing back to what I said at the beginning of the video, the chimera ants are part chimera ant and part human. And it's interesting because you see the way the chimera ants treat the humans in this brutal, cold, awful way. And then he says this line, and it is interesting because humans, while we love animals, right? Like we love that Knuckle is, is so kind to the dogs and, and we ideally pamper our pets. There are also a lot of people that are brutal and terrible to animals. And in reality, there's a lot of inhumane animal treatment that goes into the way we get our food or the way, you know, animals are tested on for products. And there's a lot to be said about the way humans treat animals. And here he is saying, look at the way you treat animals. Why would I treat you different? Why would I care about you? Why would I spare your life? And it's just interesting as someone who's part animal, part human, and he's taken on some of the personality of the human that he was born from. I don't know, I don't know. My mind's just a spinning. I'm just excited to spend more time with King. I'm excited to spend more time with him because he's already proven himself to be a ruthless, um, selfish, antagonist that's very, very powerful. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is also the scene where we learn that when he kills and eats rares, rare humans, um, he only gets stronger. So not only is he brutal and ruthless and incredibly strong, and all of these chimera ants are incredibly strong, but now we know that the leader of, at least this, at least part of, of the chimera ants, now we know that he also only gets stronger the more rare types of humans he kills. Oh my goodness, where's the ceiling for these people? And this is only threat level B? I don't remember the way they worded it, but they, they labeled them B. What? A! Anyway, we get this at the scene where Gon is on the phone with someone, I don't remember who, probably Knuckle, and he asks, did you find Kite? And the other end of the line is quiet, and then they say, uh, we found him. I can't say that he's okay. I think that they were experimenting on him. I think they were using him for training. And, and Gon's reply is, We'll get him back to normal. His bottomless hope is, um, 
I think something that he's gonna have to grow up from pretty soon. Anyway, Gon and Palm go on their date and I don't care about that, so I'm just gonna skip it. Killua then is confronted with uh, Ramont again. And oh, this scene, This scene was incredible because this is the first time we see Killua's uh, strong, stoic, um, controlled uh, facade, demeanor, outward appearance, not just crack, but absolutely crumble, where he's terrified, he's paralyzed with fear, he's shaking all over, he's sobbing, not crying, sobbing, thinking about how scared he is, but how Badly, he doesn't want to leave Gon. He doesn't want to abandon him. He doesn't want to do what Biscuit says that he's destined to do. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And the scene where he's breaking down and crying and, and, and losing it and remembering all the times that he's had with Gon, all the memories they've made together. <sighs> and this fight, this confrontation with Ramont ends up leading to him finding the needle that his brother left in his head. And it's so smart, it's so brilliant because we've spent so little time with his brother and what little time we've spent with him, the majority of it was in the Hunter Hunter exam where we're introduced to his needles and the effects that they have. And while I don't remember being introduced to the idea that a needle in the head could, could change something about the way you think. I don't remember that being established back then. The needles are the one thing I remember about his brother because it's pretty much the only interaction we've had from him. So when he pulls that out and he's like, oh, my brother left this here, it's like, like it makes sense. It just, it all comes back. It all comes rushing back. And the fact that Killua's response to this, pulling that needle out and realizing that this voice in his head that's been urging him to run over and over again, that's been overpowering his own or trying to overpower his own true who he is, that his brother was toying with his brain. Maybe it was well-intended. Maybe he was trying to keep his brother alive. Maybe not. I don't know. But the fact that his brother was messing with his brain and was causing this huge conflict in him where he was questioning himself. And when he pulls that needle out and he just laughs and says, huh, you got me. What kind of stuff has this family done to him that that's his reaction? What kind of things has he seen? What kind of ideas does he have about his family that when someone has literally altered your brain, your response is, huh, you got me. I don't even, I don't, I can't even. <sighs> anyway, then he does the snake thing which I don't understand, but it's awesome. And he says, go tell the other Chimera ants, if you try to mess with me or with Gon, you're gonna die. And then he's like, "Never mind, I'm just gonna kill you. And then he kills him. I'm gonna highlight this comment. I, I uh, on, my, on my second channel with my weekly reading vlogs, I update what I'm reading every week. And I, I talked very briefly about this. And there was a comment on the vlog that I just thought was excellent and I wanna highlight it, so. Thank you, Jay. I'm gonna read your comment. I love the needle scene so much. Illum Illumi had always been controlling him with the needle and it's foreshadowed as early as the hunter exam, but it was the insecurity that Killua had which led him to not overcoming it for a long time. We see this when he ended up killing I don't know how to say these names. But now, when confronting Ramont, he does not run away despite the voices he hears in his head. He holds his ground due, his, due to his love for Gon and how he has gradually stepped out of his shell this entire time. And even after the needle is removed, it's not as if all his problems are resolved. It's just one step in the right direction and it feels earned. This was so perfectly put because this needle situation, I haven't read further, so I don't know, but I assume, and Jay seems to think as well, that it's not over. It's not like Killua's flaw is all of a sudden gone and his insecurities and his fears are all of a sudden vanished. It's not like problem solved, but it is one significant step forward. And I just loved the way it all played out. Um, Knuckle and uh, Morel fight the jaguar uh, chimera ant. 
And I really enjoyed this fight scene. I love the way they use this smoke screen effect to confuse things and it was so fun to read. And uh, Knuckle did end up putting his Nen banker on Jaguar. So Jaguar now has 30 days of no Nen, which I don't know how this is gonna play out, but that sure does leave this one chimera ant very, very vulnerable. So if we, I mean, he is the king of speed. He is the fastest chimera, so chimera ant. So, I mean, I don't know if we can catch him, but I'm excited to see what's gonna happen there. Ah, oh, man, okay, so enter new kite. So we get to see new kite and they say, we think he was being used as a tool for the soldier ants. He mechanically attacks anything that approaches. So Gon approaches and he says, kite, it's gonna be okay. And kite swings and Gon takes blow after blow after blow and finally dodges and wraps him in a hug. And he says, I'm sorry, kite. It's our fault this happened. And Gon swears to take down Pito. And Knuckle asks, uh, what did you two do to change so much in such a short time? And Killua says, nothing really. They're the ones who changed us. What a terrible scene. <laughs> what a fantastic scene that left me so broken. I really hurt for Gon. I hurt for him so much for what he's had to see and for the rage that's left behind. So the arc ends, no, it doesn't. The part that I read ends, I, I ended it on the next chapter, which is where Gon's 30 days runs out. And uh, Morel says, I don't, I don't know. I'm not convinced that you are good enough. So he says, uh, imagine I'm the one that did this to Kite and hit me with all you got. So Gon thinks about Kite's condition and he powers up and it is the most powered up. It's the strongest he's ever been. And Knuckle sees it, not Knuckle, Morel sees it and starts to sweat. <laughs> and I think he knows this, this may be the end for me. And Gon is so filled with rage and so filled with hatred that it builds up into the biggest, the, 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 the most strength he's displayed up to this point. And he's ready to kill his comrade because he's thinking of Pito in his place. And Kiloha just walks up, places a hand on his shoulder and says, that'll be enough. Gon even realizes, oh shoot, I almost killed you. I'm so sorry. Because he forgot who was in front of him. He completely lost control. And the fact that the rage and the hatred and the anger is affecting him on this level, and the fact that even through that, Killua, just a simple touch and a word can break through it all. Man, it's a powerful scene. Anyway, that's as far as I've read so far. And I'm loving it and hating it. I am repeatedly, as I read, I am thinking, I'm dreading reading on. Not because, I'm loving it. I love it. I love it so much, but I dread reading on because I'm afraid of what we're gonna, what's gonna happen next. I'm having a blast. I'm having a wonderful time. So I will read on. And oh, if you didn't know, if you haven't already seen, uh, I have a schedule planned for June and my Chimera Ant videos are gonna be one, two, three. So they'll be back to back to back. So we'll, we'll discuss this arc really closely together. Check out my Patreon if you wanna talk about it with me as I'm reading it. That's always fun. Uh, by the time this video goes up, I'll have already read the content for the middle of the video so you can catch me at the end of the arc if you feel like it. The schedule will also be in a community tab that I will have posted by this point, so you can check that out too. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I post vlog videos on Thursdays, which will be linked in the description that channel will be. Please continue to chat with me in the comments about the stuff that I didn't cover, the stuff that I got wrong. I'd love for you to help me to understand it better or just elaborate on some of the stuff that I talked about. Um, I'll see you again soon. Bye.